The first mechanism of microevolution that I wanted to address is called genetic drift. And this is something that basically is talking about random events that affect populations, especially when it comes to small populations or events that reduce the size of the population and create a shift in the allele frequency by cause of randomness. So let's say, for example, you have a bottle that's full of beads and they have these beads of different colors, blue and yellow beads, and they're all kind of shuffled in there. But maybe there's a little more blue beads near the top than the bottom, and just kind of like randomly like that. And then when you get those beads and you pour it out of the bottle, and you just pour a little bit. Now, you just did what is called a bottleneck effect, which drastically reduces the population. And now the new population may have more of blue than yellow, as you see in the picture. And all of a sudden, if you create a new population based on that population by splitting them over and over again... Uh, process like asexual production or whatever, you're going to end up creating more blue than yellow in the population because that's the alleles which are more common now. So the population will shift towards the blue because of the fact that those were the only ones that accidentally survived. And that's what we call genetic drift. And it has to do with the fact that you reduce the population size. And you see, when you reduce the population size, you expose the population to the effects of genetic drift, which is the drift or, or shift of the allele frequency towards a certain type of allele because of a random event that causes a certain of them to survive. So you have a gene pool that has all these alleles, and because of something random, a few of them survive, and then that's going to determine how the future generations are going to be looking like. For example, here you see in the bottom, the red and white yellow bugs are kind of about the same rate, but then by an accident, you open a little box for a couple of bugs to be fit into, and some red bugs are the first two to get in, but just randomly so. And then all the next generation is going to be based off those bugs. And so the entire bug population that comes out of that is going to be red. And that happens with very, very shift very quickly because of the bottlenecking that took place. Uh, you see the same thing happening with the flowers there in the bottom across a few generations. Now, an example of this would be something, for example, let's say there's a zombie apocalypse. And everybody that's in the surface gets eaten by the zombies and then turns into zombies. But... These groups of miners and other people that work on the ground come back upstairs after spending a week down in the ground and all they realize, oh my God, there's a zombie apocalypse going on, you know? And then they have to figure out how to survive and all that. But the thing is, now the human population just went from being the high variety of population that you have with all the different races and whatever to whatever was randomly the case of the people who were there in the bottom. So only those people would now be the 100% of the human population that's left just because they happened to be on the ground when the event took place. So that's a random effect that's caused, uh, causing population to shift very quickly. And that's what we mean by genetic drift. Here you see yet another example of genetic drift. Let's say, for example, you walk on the street and there's a bunch of bugs and you step on them, but you accidentally step on more green bugs than you step on tan bugs. All of a sudden, the tan bug population is bigger than the green bug population. So you see just the random effect. You try to squash these bugs. There's a bunch of yellow, a bunch of red ones, but you accidentally then squash a few, and now the ratios are going to change from 50-50 because you squash them to something more like, you know, more yellow than you have red. So you get a, a sudden shift in the population just because you accidentally hit a few of, of, of the bugs. And that was random, whichever bug you actually happened to hit. To hit. You, didn't, you weren't actually trying to select. It was completely random. It's called, it's called genetic drift or the bottlenecking effect. Another example of this genetic drift effect is kind of similar. It's based on the same concepts. Is the idea of a founder effect. Now, say, for example, you have an original population. And of this original population, um, a certain groups actually move into a new area. They migrate to a new area. And then they grow in isolation in this new area. Generations later, the composition of the population will be pretty much mirror the composition of the initial population that move into that area. Notice, for example, that the red gene was very, very rare among the original population. There was only one person with it. But as you move into a new population, and now he's going to be one out of five instead of one out of th uh, thousands, all of a sudden, as time goes by, the, kind of, the same ratio kind of stays if not, no other factors took, take place. And therefore, now you see a population that has a lot more of that gene than the original population had because of the migration that had a specific trait about it. Look, for example, it's similar to something that we did with the bugs. If you have yet red and yellow bugs, but the red bug is the only one that somehow finds its way to an island, either by carried by the wind or he flies over there, or he goes in a log or something, and then all of a sudden these bugs reproduce in that island, that island is going to be made up of red bugs or bugs that look like that red bug because that's the bug that was the father or the founder of all the bugs in that population. And you, Darwin saw this happening with the finches 
in other kinds of iguana and other organisms that live in the Galapagos Islands. They realized these organisms were very similar from the organisms that live in the mainland in the South American coast, but somehow they were tra they traveled through the islands and they but a specific group must have been the originals of all these life forms and then they kind of radiated from that and adapt the radiation and you got all these different kinds of organisms but they were very very similar to each other mostly because they had the same founder or the same original parent for the population so the traits were pretty much fixated in the population since they were the population started from a small group and so that's what we call the uh, founder effect. And together, the founder effect and, and the, the bottleneck effect is what we call genetic drift, or the shifts of the allele frequency in the population suddenly towards a certain look, usually because of random effects that affect small population numbers. So to see what happens when you have small populations, it's easier to change the look in those cases.